Starring tonight, Miss Rosalind Russell in Anton Leder's production of The Sisters, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Now, here is one I think would be very lovely. It has a far superior lining, pure silk, much heavier than the others we've looked at. Uh, do you care for this one, Miss Haskell? Yes, that's very nice. But I believe I'd like to see something perhaps even a little better. Oh, of course. If you will just step over this way, Miss Haskell. Now, here, here is an exquisite casket. Something that really does honor to the departed. Yes, it's beautiful. Now, the interior is just the same as the last, but the casket itself is a bronze, solid bronze. Won't that be rather heavy? Oh, yes, but not too heavy. Uh, will there be six pallbearers? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter, really. Four men can carry this very easily, very. Uh, Miss Haskell, I want you to notice the floral design here. All hand-wrought, every bit of it. And, uh, oh, oh, yes, uh, notice the seams in this casket. Airtight and watertight, uh, guaranteed. <clears throat> you know, of course, how important that is. Yes. Yes. Uh, but this casket, in a hundred years or even two hundred years, will be just as strong and will look just as beautiful as it does on this stand today. You couldn't buy a finer piece of workmanship. How much would this one be, please? Uh, this casket, uh, Duravo, by the way, Duravo for durability, we say in the trade. Uh, this casket is priced at uh, $775. <clears throat> We uh, can't bring back the departed. Our only solace is the knowledge that we have done them the last possible honor. Very well. I'll take this one. Oh, well, I'm sure you are making a very wise choice. In all my years as a mortician, I've never found a family that regretted money spent on a Duravo. Yes. <clears throat> now, uh, let me see. I'll give you a check. Oh, oh, that won't be necessary. Not immediately. After the funeral will do. Oh, uh, by the way, we haven't mentioned it. Our... Uh, <clears throat> Are we handling the funeral arrangements? I don't know yet. Oh. Well, uh, you want the casket delivered uh, somewhere? No. I'd like you to hold it for a while, please. Hold it? Uh, but uh, for how long? For three weeks. Three weeks? I don't understand. Uh, who is the party, the uh, deceased? Uh, who is the casket for? It's for me. Lydia? Lydia? I thought I heard you come in. Where have you been, Lydia? You've been gone all afternoon. I've been shopping. What did you buy? Did you get the ribbons I asked for? No, I didn't have time. Oh, I wanted some new ribbons. These are all worn out. See, Lydia? Uh, Ellie, I wish you'd stop putting ribbons in your hair like a schoolgirl. You're almost 40 years old. I know, Lydia. I know. Then try to act like it. Oh, hand me my sewing. And light the lamp. It's getting dark. I wonder why we have to grow old. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we had always stayed young like we used to be? Oh, Lydia. <laughs> Remember when Mother used to send us out to school with our ribbons matching and our dresses matching? And at the end of the day, no one would even guess we were sisters because I was always so must and you were always so clean. <laughs> oh, I wish we were young again, Lydia. Stop talking nonsense, Ellie. It is nonsense, isn't it? Oh, the doorbell rang while you were out, just before you came home. You didn't answer us? Oh, no. You told me never to answer it. I just looked out of the upstairs window. Did you see who it was? Oh, yes, yes, it was a man. A rather big man. He rang a long time and then he went away. He didn't see you, did he? Oh, no. I just peeked ever so carefully from behind the curtains. Then I came down here and watched him going down the walk. You came downstairs? Yes. I told you never to come down those stairs when I'm not in this house. It was all right, Lydia. I held on very tight to the banisters all the way. And I didn't once look down the stairwell. So I didn't get dizzy and I didn't want to jump. Well, don't do it again. It was just that I was lonely. I didn't think you were ever coming home. Lydia, you didn't tell me what you bought. A Duravo. What's that? What's a Duravo? Don't ask so many questions, Ellie. All right. Lydia, I think I'll sew, too. I could fix up one of these old ribbons here. May I, Lydia? Yes, yes, sew. It will be good for you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lydia. Yes? 
Lydia, could I go shopping someday? Don't be a fool. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I just thought that... No, I suppose you're right. It wouldn't do. Not yet. Mm-hmm. Lydia, sing with me. You know I never sing. There wasn't any mail today. Wasn't there? No. I thought perhaps there'd be a letter from David. It's been such a long time since he's written, hasn't it? I haven't noticed. Oh, yes. He used to write every week on Tuesday. And I'd get the letter on Thursday. But there wasn't one this week or last or the week before that. Strange, isn't it? But perhaps he's been busy. Perhaps. Still, he never used to be too busy to write. I can't understand it. Do you suppose there's some other reason? What are you trying to say to me, Ellie? Are you hinting perhaps I'm keeping your mail from you? Oh, no. Well, you certainly seem to be. Why should I keep David's letters from you? But I didn't say that. I just said it was strange that David hasn't written, that's all. You wouldn't keep David's letters, I know that, Lydia. Go on with your sewing. Yes. I want to finish this ribbon. Stop singing that. Stop it. But, but Lydia, it's a hymn. I don't care. I said stop. Or learn something else. That's all you sing day and night, day and night. Same tune over and over and over. Now stop it. Lydia. Lydia, sometimes you frighten me. The way you look at me, you make me think that... that perhaps I'm not getting well. That perhaps I'm still... crazy. I'm not... I'm not still crazy. Am I, Lydia? Yes? Uh, evening. Are you Miss Lydia Haskell? Yes. Well, then. Uh... Can I speak to you for a minute? I was here this afternoon. There was no one home. What is it, please? We had a call from Dawn Brothers, the undertakers. I'm from the police department. Oh, really? I don't see what the police could want with me. Come in, if you wish. Thank you. Sit down. Yeah, thank you. Well, there's nothing we want, Miss Haskell, except it's sort of unusual for a woman to order a casket for herself. Unusual? I've heard of many cases of that kind. People who are alone in the world, there's no one else to look after things. Oh, yes, yeah, sure, I know. Only it's a little more unusual when you can name the date. The, uh, the undertaker said you wanted the casket held for three weeks. Why three weeks? There must be some reason for it. There is. I'm going to die. I shall die in three weeks or perhaps even before. There's no doubt in my mind about it and that's why I've ordered the casket. You may call it a premonition if you want. Maybe I could also call it suicide. Well, that's why I'm here, Miss Haskell. I don't know whether you know it, but suicide's a crime in the eyes of the state. A crime for which there is no punishment. Not if it's successful, no. But there is prevention. I know I'm going to die. I feel it. But I have no intention of taking my own life. There's no need to do so. Miss Haskell, this premonition, as you call it, uh, have you any idea what, what brought it on? No. Have you been speaking to anyone? No fortune tellers or anything like that? <laughs> no. Well, what makes you so sure? How do you know you can trust this premonition? You're not an old woman. I, I'd say you're in pretty good health. You've got a lot of good years ahead of you. I have a religion, not a church religion. Just one of my own. It preaches that people go on living until they've outgrown their usefulness. Then they die from one cause or another. When that time comes, the desire to live is gone. And only desire keeps the body and soul alive and breathing. Oh, I, I don't understand that. I'm sorry. Miss Haskell, do you live alone here? Yes. No relations, no housekeeper? I live alone here. Well, it's a pretty large house for a person living alone. There are three floors and far too many rooms. But it's on the outskirts of town. It's quiet and it gives me the privacy I've been looking for. 
a privacy which you are invading for the first time since I moved here five years ago. I'm sorry, Miss Haskell. I'm only doing my job. I was told to look you up and find out why you bought that casket. Then I think we may assume your job is over. Yeah, I guess so, but the office might ask me to drop back once in a while just to keep in touch, you know. I won't be at home. Why? You don't go out very much, I ask. The folks in town say they don't even see you more than once a week. When maybe. you come, I won't be at home. All right. Sorry to bother you. Good night. Good night. Oh, Miss Haskell, how are you going to die? I don't know, nor do I consider it important. Why should you? Good night. Good night. <laughs> 